Okay, Alex Scapins. Uh, how you going, brother? I'm good, yeah. Thanks for having me on the show today. No, I appreciate um, it. Second podcast for me, so I'm pretty excited to get the discussion going. Rip into it, eh? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So I met you. I've had a few. I've had Saskia and Jordan Spencer on from the IOM World Championships, yeah. and you're actually one of the competitors. They were commentators, and yep. I think, what did you finish? You in the A fleet. I was, yeah, finished in the A fleet, which is a pretty sort of, you know, significant I guess achievement. It's pretty hard to stay up there. You, you're sailing some of the best sailors in the world and stuff. So, finishing up there was really good. Overall, um, 17th out of 76 competitors. So, mm-hmm. up in that top quarter, which is one of the goals I wanted to do. Yep. Um. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Yeah, and you all need qualification to be able to compete these world championships. Yeah. So these yeah. guys are virtually yeah. the best in the world. Yeah. Initially, I remember initially I was being told they were going to take top five competitors from Australia. So I did a lot of traveling interstate to compete and get my points up. And I think I was number five coming into it, um, for the world. So I, I sort of, um, got that spot, um, in the team. And then, uh, yeah, I was planning to sort of come up to Gladstone and do the world championships, which was cool. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. So you yeah. definitely got that background sailing and runs through your family's blood. Definitely, especially my dad. He's always sort of been brought up with sailing his whole life. So I'm sort of, yeah, followed in his footsteps. Um, and, yeah, here we are. Mm. But full-time, you're a videographer from Adelaide. Just like yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool it's- that we've, yeah, met and sort of got it going. So, um, yeah, I'm a full-time videographer in Adelaide. Um, been doing it for – I'm trying to think now I've lost count it must be six or seven years professionally now properly so yeah I've definitely learned a lot of things along the way yeah you've done a lot of travel too like you were mentioning to me earlier yeah definitely the last I guess the last three or four years after COVID has been like the most sort of traveling I've I've ever done so um that was always like the dream to sort of you know all us content creators and videographers want to go overseas and do that whole travel experience and work with brands and stuff. And yeah, we got that going and I guess we still want to keep that going, but um, open to new doors as well. Yeah, hundred percent. So I guess like if we were to dial it back a bit, born in Adelaide? Born in Adelaide. Yeah. Born and bred. Yeah. Big yeah. family or? Not really. Um, there's like, yeah, I mean, my mum, dad, and I've got an older brother and just myself. So, and then we've got like obviously intermediate family and stuff, but not the biggest family out there. Pretty stealth, pretty small. Yep. And like growing up, were you always like creative, would you say? I think I always had that creative touch. I just, you know, didn't know how to use it effectively. Um, I remember I sort of started off always like sketching and drawing and, um, you know, expressing my creativity through that originally through my younger days. And then as I got older, I sort of showed a bit of interest in cameras um, and filming and documenting and stuff. But then I didn't really have anything going like, you know, between the teenage years um, and and then it all sort of kick-started kick during high, uh, end of high school. That's when it sort of, yeah, appeared. Yep, so cool. graduated high school and then you go just straight full-time Trying to get your first client? Uh, it was a bit of a sort of tricky, yeah, tricky path to start with. I um, I was in year 12 and I was doing photography and, and web design and graphic design and all those things. And I had one of the best teachers throughout my last three years of school. And he, um, he saw, I started a YouTube channel and he s- saw some of my videos and said, hey, mate, you've got like some potential here. Like, keep it up, keep it going. I see see your vision and what you want to do because I kept saying I want to travel and, you know, become a YouTuber and uh, capture the world and stuff and document it. And, yeah, I sort of started doing that but not no travel yet, still young days. Um, and then people started seeing videos and after that, um, I guess, um, you know, that was the start of like the peak start of Instagram. So you start posting like your photos, photography and and videos and stuff and then eventually you start if you do good work uh business owners and 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 clients start picking you up and wanting you to do work for them and you know create promotional videos um to help sell their business and their story so 
yeah, it sort of two year the first two years after school, it really um, was like that grind phase where you know you're not really earning any money, you're just getting pocket money, um, but it's still like shaping you in the right direction, I guess. Just getting that experience and just building your reputation anyway. Yeah. Yeah, definitely that trust factor, that reputation is so key at the start. So you sort of do a lot of those jobs for, you know, pocket money or even free just to get your name out. But then you hit a stage where you're like, all right, it's game on. Like we're serious here. We want to get it get it properly rolling. And that's mm. when you enter that next phase. So, yeah, it's been a long journey so far, but it's good. That's definitely one of the things, you know, a lot of people should know is like when you are first starting out, just be willing to do free work. Definitely. Even though it hurts and it's you, you feel like you're not get, getting anywhere, it does help um, in the long run for sure. So, yeah, you just got to sort of, you know, grind through that stage and then once you know your worth, that's when you start charging and, and creating a proper service for them. And I guess as well, like when you do it for free, it's yep. a lot less stress on the client. Yeah. But also you're experiencing the full production process of pre-production, production, production post-production. Yep. And obviously sending off the finished finish product. It's essentially just a training mm. sort of to get to that next level. And you build a system to become more efficient over time. And yep. it's kind of like the, you know, one of my mentors calls it the creative loop, you know. Yep. Um, you know, find your client get a game plan together, film, yep. post-production, like I mentioned, world-class delivery, and then you just keep repeat, repeating that cycle. And every time you complete a loop, you spiral up. Yeah, definitely. And obviously over time that you spiral higher, 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 higher yep. and then to a level where you are seen as professional and then you start getting the bigger gigs. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's just a long sort of phase at the start, but, um, yeah, with good work sort of comes good clients, so... Um, but yeah, the one thing I always told myself and, and other mentors I had along the road always said, just know your worth and where you stand and stuff. Like there's a point of time where you're, where you're like, it no longer needs to be free because you know, it's a proper service at the end of the day and you're helping other businesses. So they got to help you and support you. Mm. So, yeah. And now you've niched down into a lifestyle market. How'd you come about that? That's just the direction you wanted to go or did you fall into that position? Um, I think I always wanted to go that direction because I saw, you know, as you would know, you know, the travel content creators like the Peter McKinnons, the, um, all those inspirational photographers and videographers around the world traveling and working with brands and stuff. And I always saw that vision and something I wanted to do. It felt like freedom to me. Um, you can go the whole corporate route and weddings and all that, but I felt like that I'd, I'd feel a bit trapped. At, so I always wanted to, you know, be able, be a bit more free. And the good thing about lifestyle is like life, lifestyle creating and shooting for brands in that niche is like a lot of the time they want to go to unique places to shoot like these campaigns and these promotional videos for their products and their brands. Um, so it opens that window of like worldwide travel and interstate travel and, and even local, but just in cool locations. And, you know, you got to pick the location based on, um, the brand and what they, what their guidelines are and their niche and their overall style. So it's very, you know, it's, it's very niche, but it's also very open as well. And that's what I love about it. You're not just trapped in one location, like the whole time for the shoot. So I guess when you you started off in Adelaide and then yep. you moved to Sydney. Yep. Is that when you started that is that when the lifestyle content started coming about? Definitely. Um I mean I had that yeah, when I was in Adelaide, this was after school. So I was creating all those YouTube videos on and off. Um and then I sort of knew I had to go interstate to get to that next level and open up my creative mind. But it's funny, it all kick started because I um when I was just when I just turned 20 years old, I knew I had to go to Los Angeles um, because that was where all like the YouTubers and the creative sort of people were at that time shooting for these brands and traveling and getting paid for all that. So I wanted to get a taste of what that felt like being in such a creative, um, you know, hub. LA is like the creative hub of the world. Everyone sort of, every photographer, filmmaker wants to be there because everyone's, you know, pushing each other to new heights and, 
and I got a taste of that. I, I was there for three months um, in 2018 uh, and I networked and sort of uh, essentially lived with a few creators themselves and, you know, I got a taste of that lifestyle and travelling and shooting and obviously not getting paid for anything. But, um, yeah, that really kick-started it all for me and I got that creative mindset of my style and what I wanted to do with it and then when I came back to – Adelaide, I was like, I got to go to like the biggest cities in Australia and really, you know, get it on and push to that next level. And that's where um, I moved to Sydney and then was there for about eight months, just, you know, doing small clients, but in that more lifestyle niche, but still open to um, more wider sort of, you know, um, niches like the the weddings and, and the more corporate stuff just to you know, keep that income so I could upgrade gear and equipment so that I could do the lifestyle um, content and work for brands that I inspired to do. So, yeah. After those eight months, where'd you go after that? So I had some friends I was doing like a bunch of um, music videos for. They, they're in a band and they're based, they were based in Melbourne at the time and um, I met them just after I came back from LA. They were living in Adelaide and then they moved to Melbourne to pursue their music career. And I was in Sydney um, and then I contacted them and we were like, I was shooting, flying in Melbourne all the time just to shoot music videos for them and then ended up moving over there so that we could, you know, get a townhouse and all the creatives could be in, in the same place at one time. And um, so I lived with them for a year, which was awesome. We had a, an amazing time. Um, and yeah, I was same as, same as Sydney, just grinding, trying to get clients and, and a regular income in Melbourne. Um, but yeah, it's always a hustle at that stage. That was like that two year gap between when I started and when I was sort of progressing. So you're not, you're still not making that, you know, as regular income as now. Um, but you're shaping your personal brand and your business brand as well. So I think I was in a good position at that stage where I was really starting to bring on those new clients um, so I could pro progress in Melbourne. So, yeah, we were there for about a year at that stage and um, and then COVID sort of came in just as, just as things were like getting real sweet and, and you know, um, yeah, it was tricky. It was tricky because you start progressing and then that comes in play and then stops everything. So it was pretty hard at that time. So, yeah. Yeah, Melbourne definitely was hit pretty hard with COVID. Yep. So you've pretty much bounced from Melbourne back to Adelaide yep. to get away from all that lockdown environment. Yeah. You know what? I, I feel like it sort of worked for the better because if I was there, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, work for a year. Whereas Adelaide sort of had on and off lockdowns, not as frequent as Melbourne, so I could still um, get some shoots going and 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 earn some income during that time, because um, obviously I was based there prior to moving to Sydney, so I still had some of those clients that were ready to sort of um, book and and get in play. So yeah, it it sort of worked out for the better, and once I moved back to Adelaide and that COVID started, you know, fixing itself. Um, that's when the biz, like what I'm doing really took off. It's almost, yeah, you almost feel like it, it worked out for the better in the long run. You've traveled interstate, you've done that, you've built those connections and now you can come back home and you've got that sort of, um, trust and, and client base, I guess. And that's when you start working with bigger brands. Like you mentioned, you did some work with Ford yep. along the way and yep. more car car brands. Yeah, I guess that um, as, as we were talking about lifestyle content, that sort of comes into play with like those auto um, companies and stuff because, again, they want to capture videos and photos in like cool places around Australia. So it requires travel and you can take the car anywhere and create these cool videos for them and photography as well. Um, in such cool landscapes, always inspired to shoot in, um, yeah, really, really cool landscapes and terrain and stuff. And when you get, you know, sent, sent a Ford to, to borrow for the week and create content, it's pretty special. Yep. It's an opportunity that a lot of people, you know, don't get the experience and definitely 
one the many benefits of you know making that jump and yep. taking that risk of going out on your own and definitely yeah it's still like it was still like you know at that collaborative sort of phase with such a big brand like that but it's still pretty special for them to reach out and acknowledge your work and and want to sort of um take your brand and and connect it with theirs so yeah at the time i was pretty stoked so looking when you say you're going to a job you win a project with a client what where does the creative process start for you how do you how do you schedule out the shoot from start to finish so uh, I guess uh, when they approach, usually they'll come up. I, most of the time they have an idea in place, um, which is great. You know, you don't want to just, you know, have this client say, I want to shoot a video and not have an idea of what they want, like an aim or a goal or a, an idea of what they want to achieve. So most of the time, 95% of the time, the client has an idea and then you can help them build on that and tell them what's possible and start, you know bring that idea to life for them. Um, so it starts off with like, you know, the initial chat, as you would know, catch up, um, discuss ideas and understand their brand and what they want to achieve. And then after that, you sort of start getting into the meat of things where, um, which is the pre-production phase and really building that concept to like an idea and, and sketching it out prior to shooting. And once you've built that pre that storyboard and and all those ideas in the pre-production phase, you can then begin to you know start start the filming process, which is for me is the fun sort of side of things. And then that oh, that's often like the I don't know if you would agree, but that's often the you know the most enjoyable part of it. And then mm. you get into the you know the post-production phase, which is the time-consuming and you know many hours in a seat sitting down and bringing the project to life, which is essentially still very fun, but more draining. Yep. What would you find? I'm interested to know what, what do you find your favorite part of the whole creative phase? Honestly, I just like the yeah. idea of strategy yeah. and yeah. putting it into practice. And yeah. I like making systems more efficient. How do I, you know, how do I approach this yeah. from a better perspective or yeah. angle the next time? Yeah. I always think forward, like, how can I make this better next time? Yeah. And more so than yeah. being in the so moment. Evolve. I definitely do like the creative side of yeah. uh, the creative side of it, but yeah. I definitely find I am getting more into the business mindset of it all and yep. creating, like I said, those systems and strategies to create quicker turnover times, which yeah. which clients want these days. Everyone, yeah. unfortunately, we, we live in a world now that's it's fast becoming pace. faster and faster every day. Yeah. So if you want to be the best, I feel like you still need to focus on quality, but you also need to focus on speed. Efficiency. And, yeah. and also like getting back to your clients, following up, keeping them informed yeah. with things going wrong, things going right. Yeah. It's it's just a game. And I, I got into it for the creative, but I've yeah. enjoying the more the business side of business it. Business side, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm a little bit the same, but also the opposite. I love the creative side and, you know, I want to keep evol evolving with that business side, but um, yeah, sometimes it's challenging at the same time, but mm. just got to let the creative work do the talking sometimes, as we mentioned before early on in our chat. So, yeah. So I guess like where, where are you going from here? Where do you have your mindset? Do you eventually want to move to another country to keep growing the brand, your personal brand, business brand, or do you want to kind of just, what do you want to do? Yeah, it's a tricky one because, um, you know, you got to always think of what's the next step and stuff. But um, I feel like we're in an industry where it's forever growing. So, um, yeah, I think essentially the next step for me is like I've done a lot of that travel stuff, spent the last, you know, two, three years over, like on and off overseas shooting projects and you sort of get to a stage where it becomes like living out of the suitcase mm. beca can become a challenge and stuff. Um, and I love, you know, being back home and having that lifestyle where you can go to the gym and, um, you know, edit a cafe one morning and create a bit of a, you know, process in place. Whereas overseas it's just uh, living out of the suitcase and sweating on planes and mm. <laughs> just yeah it's tricky but it's enjoyable as well um but yeah to answer your question it's it's one of those things 
I, I, I would love to sort of expand and, you know, create it into may, maybe change, change it into a proper company and, um, uh, create a name and, and start employing some people and essentially build a production company so that we can, you know, aspire to, sh to shoot those even bigger brands where it requires a bit of a team behind it. Cause a lot of the time it's a bit more, um, you know, two, three people on set, pretty stealth, which I, I've always enjoyed, but, um, I would love to in the long term move into a, you know, bigger productions and, and work with those bigger brands and where it requires, you know, a few months, three months of preparation and, and, you know, a week or two of filming, that'd be awesome. And just, you know, getting a taste of something fresh and new. So I guess, do you have a bit of a business plan or like time horizon you want to achieve that by or are you more just like going with the flow i think a bit of both like going with the flow is always cool because you know you don't get in your head as much and you're, you're not stressed mm. on that time factor of not achieving it in that time frame but also it's important to you know set set a bit of a timeline to achieve that so i think for me like in the next uh few years i would love to start initiating that and um you know, getting that ball rolling and putting those business plans in place to, to get that going. But, um, yeah, we're slowly just taking those baby steps to achieve that and building that, you know, reputation and personal brand so that when we do evolve into that bigger company, it's and biz bigger business model. It's, um, we've got a bit of a, you know, name for that and you can, you can, you can start bringing on those bigger clients as soon as we've made that move and not essentially having to start all over again, if that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. And also when you went to LA when you're 20, you obviously would have had to done networking before that when you were in Melbourne with the band, that's all networking, networking. Yeah. So what's your strategies to, if you want to reach out to say people with big per personal brands or even minor personal brands, yeah. like at any level, what's your strategy to get in contact with them and build that relationship? Sorry, say that one more time, if that's all right. So, well, I guess like, how do you get in contact with them and build a relationship to the point where you literally go to LA yep. and, you know, do shoots with these people? Uh, is this for when you went to, fog. when you went to LA yep. when you were 20 yep. and you went over there and you were doing shoots with people of, of personal course. friends and that. Yeah. So what's your strategy to be able to, you know, reach out to them, whether it's on social media, even just by message, email. Yep build that relationship to the point where you literally go over there physically in person with them. I think it's, it's one of those things you got to, um, as soon as you've, you know, got another per like another friend that you sort of, you know, throwing ideas and, and concepts with, you just got to, um, I guess have the same vision and ideas and stuff. And then you can start, you know, having those conversations of like, Oh, we should hang out and go to these countries and shoot and stuff. Um, it, yeah, it, it comes down to, you know, one trust and two having the same ideas. Like there's no point flying to the other side of the world to meet someone if you're not on the same, you know, level and game mm. plan and ideas and stuff. So, um, you just gotta, you know, go out and search for those people and genuine people is the way to go as well. Cause a lot, sometimes you'll find people, you know, want something from you, not necessarily genuine, genuine. So, um, yeah, I, that's how I did it. Like I actually, you know, had real friends that, you know, we wanted to help each other out and get to that next level. And, um, I was fortunate enough to sort of have those people in LA and, we really got along and still talk to this day and and I've actually caught up with a few of them since so that's pretty cool um yeah it's just you know you know you just naturally let it happen sometimes don't let you know let the universe bring you guys together and and create magic not sort of force it, I guess yeah 100% how would you what did you think of LA did you enjoy it it was amazing like it's I think it's a lot different now um but back then like that was the start of, you know, when everyone wanted to create content for Instagram and stuff, it was like, you know, the creative energy in the air was on. Um, I was, it felt like a fairy tale for me to sort of be, be there and you felt it in the air, the energy of like endless possibilities. And that's why I love LA because that's the pinnacle 
like creative spot of the world. So um, for someone that's just 20, was just 20 years old at the time, um, it was pretty special and I felt like I, you know, the sky was the limit back then for me. Yeah, definitely. That's, you probably would have got definitely a lot of ideas from there too, a different definitely. environment. Yep. Being around different people with different thoughts. Yep. Yeah, it's sort of, you know, you see so many like productions and, and even smaller productions creating all these wicked ideas over there and concepts and then bringing it to life. Um, that's where I sort of, I saw some creators doing some Audi commercials, just, you know, two people with two handheld cameras just filming these epic car videos. Um, and that's where I sort of, you know, wanted to bring that back to Australia and started reaching out to those car brands and getting that going. Um, so a lot of those ideas in LA sort of came back to Australia for me. So, so well, even those big car brands like yep. Ford, which yep. is one of those brands you shop yep. for, like how do you even get onto them? Like someone you could say at, at your potential size, who they would be going through would be bigger companies. So definitely as a sole trader, how do you get into their little pocket? Well, it's one of those things. They, although they hire the, you know, the big agencies to the, do the commercials and stuff. Um, a lot of the time, those those Australian car brands are looking for to work and collaborate with creators because they bring these very unique, you know, mm. concepts, um, and they're not having to, you know, spend all that budget going through a, a a big agency. Even though that is the right move for a TVC and stuff like that, that's the way to do it. Just for more social media based stuff, going through like um, creators and influencers, um, they can get some pretty unique stealthy con concepts done um, for their car brands that they can advertise. So, um, yeah, I guess it's the best The best advice I would give to people who want to do that is like, you know, find the contacts and, you know, reach out to the PR and um, get involved that way and just, you know, come up with a really unique concept that, that makes them, you know, doesn't give them a reason not to, you know, collaborate and work with you. Mm-hmm. And building your personal brand, which is something you've built quite well now, like you just shot the 30K, I think. Yep. How have you? How many years has that taken to get to this point? And what was the strategy you used? Well, ever since I um, yeah finished school, I started up like a landscape photography page just called Alex Scapin's Photography or something like that. Um, and then I started posting on that. And, you know, you get your first like 1,000 followers and go from there. And, and then um, – and then you're, you know, posting five, six, seven times a week at that stage. And that was a lucky time of Instagram where like you could grow significantly. The algorithm was far better in my opinion. Um, it liked consistency. Um, nowadays it's very tricky. You don't know what it's doing and it's a lot harder to grow. But back then was a sweet spot. I remember um, halfway through LA like, getting to sort of that 10K margin where it started to get like pretty cool. I was creating and posting content um, every single day, like, and stories that were, or were always going up. Um, it became its own like job to sort of keep that going and and the algorithm understood that. So, you know, some days you'll wake up with 50 followers, sometimes 100, sometimes more. Um, but, yeah it's a different sort of um, playing field nowadays. We have like the, we have reels to help us out, but it's still a lot harder to grow. Sometimes you're posting five times a week and then you're actually losing some. It doesn't make sense. So back then was like the real sweet spot of, of hitting that. Um, and then, yeah, just keeping that consistency over the years and posting good content. I guess with content, yep. you just mentioned reels, like posting yep. content these days, you want to make content that's more shareable. Yeah. Is that definitely. the direction you're taking it when you approach it? Definitely. Um, it's 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 tricky because like I love, you know, longer, you know, one minute videos that tell a bit of story and stuff. And now you're sort of forced to, you know, create a video in 10 to 15 seconds and compile that into such a small form that becomes like next level challenging and, a lot of videos that go viral nowadays and create attraction are more iPhone videos rather than sort of cinema stuff and, mm. and um, professional videography. So it's tricky. Um, that's something I got to keep working on because I want to keep growing in that field. Um, I enjoy, I do 
do enjoy Instagram and sharing sort of, you know, your work and stuff, but it also has its downside as well where it's negatives, I guess, as well because you feel like you're obliged to be posting all the time and that, you know, when you're doing client work that, you know, um, knocks heads. So, yeah, it's a tricky one, but, yeah, I'm definitely trying to, you know, create some unique reels and and um, keep that attraction going. With uh, someone who wants to get into videography now and doesn't have very, well, has very little experience and not sure what direction or how to get into the game, like what would be maybe a basic starter kit and who are the probably the best clients to reach out to to get work off the bat? Definitely. Um, it's, I guess, um, you need a camera at the start of the day. Um, everyone has an iPhone. They can do it that way. Um, it is it is harder because, you know, a lot of people um, don't know how to film the iPhones and make it look professional. So, um, but it can be done if you're, if you know, what you know, the help of YouTube nowadays can teach you a lot. And that's what I used to do. Um, a lot of the time was just, you know, learn through YouTube and, and that's you, using YouTube as your best friend and mentor. So you can find a lot of tutorials on there, but if you don't have access to sort of, you know, good equipment and you want to be an aspiring videographer, definitely, um, initiate with your phone at the start. If you've got one of the new iPhones or Samsungs, whatever, Android, it can be done that way. Um, and then you sort of slowly progress yourself and, 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 uh, you know, offer a service to businesses. Local businesses are the way to go at the moment. Like just, you know, start small in your local areas. And, you know, if you want to create like a, um, some business cards or just reach out on Instagram or, you know, more professionally send an email that supplies, you know, a service to these businesses. Um, that's how you initially get in their books and, and kickstart the sort of process of working with them. Um, but yeah, it's all easier said than done, but you're better off just, you know, giving it a crack and eventually you'll find that you can, you know, create a name for yourself once you start building and snowballing that effect. So yeah, it takes a long time sometimes, you know, one, two, three years, but um, if you, you know, really focus on good work, you can, you can really make it happen. Mm. And I think another side of it too that a lot of people don't think about, like they know, but they don't think about as much as your computer setup. Yep. Um, I'm finding that I'm going to go, I've gone Windows thinking the big PC was going to yeah. be cool, but going to go back to Mac, just running off a laptop, you know, edit on a monitor at home, but having that Mac there, you're able to take your work everywhere you go. Without it's a to- cleaner setup. Like, it, mm. you know, it's, it's a good interface and, you know, they're built for creative work. So... Yeah, I'm glad you're moving to that Mac and taking that next step. Yeah, is that someone, if, you know, if someone had to make the investment, you reckon just go up all that Mac? Off definitely, the definitely. It's it's a creative suite. It sort of, you know, everything's made to run with, you know, all the programs, the Adobe programs, the after, the um, Final Cuts, um, the Da Vinci's for color grading and editing. So um, those systems are like made, made to sort of work with those, so. And ha- most of the time you're, you're running off like small SSDs, which I'm sure you, you work with. You're not actually, you know, using the whole computer to, to do the magic. You're running off smaller hard drives that take the sort of weight off the computer mm. and, um, yeah, make it a fast sort of efficient, um, workflow. Mm, it's definitely, let's go on to that more. Cause that's something I wasn't well knowledge on early on is the computer side of it and like yeah. understanding SSDs and hard drives to, like I said, speed up efficiency and workflow. So again, like going into that side of it, what starter kit would you have? Like a Mac SSD, what SD cards are you looking at? All those in yeah, small definitely. pieces. Yeah. The, the pieces, the tech that gets it done. Um, I guess like it depends on like budget and stuff, but a lot of people, you know, when you're first starting out, you don't have that budget, but if you can, you know, get your hands on like a 13 inch MacBook air or something with like an M2 chip, like, or M, I don't know what they're doing now. I can't keep up, Mm. but, um, that's going to get you sort of the initial, you know, setup that gets it done. Um, it's going to be quick enough. Um, and yeah, as long as you, you know, have like a bit of an office with, with an additional screen and stuff, you can create a cool little setup and, and also work on the on the go as well. Just at the cafes, you can just you know whip out their MacBook Air and that gets it done. But 
Um, yeah, I would suggest like using SSDs, which um, are little sort of external hard drives that that basically you edit on. That's where you keep and store all your files of the projects you shoot. Um, and that's what I've done. And I've found that very sort of efficient and, you know, streamlined for my workflow. Going through the difficult times of earlier days in your business, how'd you get through them? How'd you keep pushing yourself? Um, I guess you just, you're always looking for, you know, you're searching for like motivation and stuff like that. So whether that's like just watching YouTube videos on like, you know, people creating cool creative projects overseas and stuff. I think that always just reminds you um, of why you sort of got into it. And that for me, that was the reason I wanted to sort of have that freedom and stuff. So um, whenever I'm feeling a bit like sort of flat or down or drained, um, I just sort of start watching those videos that I originally, you know, used to watch back in the day and they keep me going and keep the clock ticking along. So, um, yeah, that's how I look at it, I guess. And, you know, I think it's important to also pick up hobbies along the side that take your mind off um, just the whole creative thing because you feel more energised. Like, you know, once you've done those things, you can come back in, in full form. Mm. And I guess like... Not in hobbies, but like focusing on your health is definitely, definitely a big thing. Health is wealth, as we know. So, yeah, having a lifestyle and, you know, a bit of a balance sort of keeps it going. Mm. Um, <clears throat> as you would know, being a creative, like having the creative juices isn't always there every day. So you're always searching to keep that going. And that's where like for someone like you that goes to the gym, I'm sure you find that's your happy place where you can take your mind and put mm. your headphones on and switch off and re-energize and that's yeah I, I sometimes enjoy doing that as well yeah it's definitely a good environment just to get away from the the screen for a bit definitely rest the eyes yeah i i'm worried one day like if we're just sitting in chairs all the time we're just going to be like these old like hunchbacks so mm. yeah it's good to sort of get up and and be moving and be active because at the editing takes up all the time in the world mm. and talking about hobbies come back to your sailing like I guess where you want to take that as well. Do you want to get more serious with that in the future? Or? Yeah, I think that was, um, we had the closing ceremony of the world championships last night. And I think that was, you know, um, ticking in my head the whole night. I was like, okay, what's the next move for this? Like, are we, you know, just going to keep this as like, you know, a bit of an outlet and just go with the flow? Or are we going to like really, you know, take this serious and start fo focusing on the next world championships in London in two years. And I was just talking to a lot of the, you know, sailors out there and, and trying to figure out a bit of a game plan, especially with the Australian team, um, of how we can sort of get mo majority of the sailors in that top 10 in the world. And it's a hard one because, you know, everyone's fighting to be up the top and some of those countries, especially in Europe, like, they can travel to each other and compete at the highest level. Whereas for Australia, you know, we're not so close together. We're not an hour away and stuff like that. Um, so it's a bit harder to, you know, gather together and start training and getting to that next level. So, but for me, the, the game, to answer your question, the game plan is to, you know, go to that next world championships. I've got two years to do it and hopefully next time we can, you know, get in the podium and, you know, really, you know, get up there in the in the leaderboard so i think this this time was more of just like a training and getting an idea of the experience of what i need to work on to achieve that yep it's definitely also in like just into the one meters or are you more also into other, other other side of sailing so actually in the dinghies and um i said that's where i sort of as i said like i mentioned um my family's been involved in like sailing um since they've known um since I've grown up and stuff. So um, it's always going to be there. Um, but I guess time is, you know, it's hard to, you know, get that time off. Um, so, and it takes more time getting in the dinghies and setting up and, you know, going out there and physically doing it. Where's the radio control yachts is like a cool, you know, you just drive up, set up in five minutes and then chuck the boat out in the water and just have a bit of a play. So that's what I love about it. And you can sit, sort of see the whole fleet. You can see all 20 boats racing and see where you're positioned and it's very tactical. Whereas although it's extremely tactical being on a boat, you don't get to see your positioning as easy when you're actually sitting in it. 
And I think that's why I like the radio control yachts. Mm. I think it's cool. And you can also always train if you drone too. Yeah, definitely. It <laughs> sort of intertwines together. Like I'll do drone aerial work for, for work and stuff. And it sort of, you know, relates back to controlling the radio control yachts. And I think it's a good sort of training to, to do both gets you better at both. Mm. And what, what countries in the future do you look to travel to? Uh, for work or just, oh, just both. Um, Great content. In it. I think uh, for me, um, going back to Europe, I, I was there like five weeks ago and I, you know, really want to go back again. So that will be cool to um, go check out more countries and experience, yeah, experience more of those countries and what they have to offer. Um, but, at the end of the day, like one of my favorite places is definitely the US. I feel like I always feel alive there and um, if opportunities feel endless and creative, the creative juice is always running in US. So um, I've done a lot of, you know, tropical islands and stuff and um, it's cool to change it up, I guess, in the future and just go to yeah Europe and US and go to some of those cool countries. Mm, it's a... Another way to get the creative juices going is looking at other content creators. So who's your go-to like influencers online? Um, I guess like, you know, as you would relate to, we always love like a good Peter McKinnon sort of vlog and stuff and where he goes and travels and creates, you know, these epic images. But someone that I um, look up to is, I don't know if you've heard of him, but it's Chris Burkhardt. Um, he's a landscape photographer okay. based in California and he yep. goes to like Iceland and shoots like, you know, um, the Northern Lights and he actually created this image, this famous image where this surfer was creating in, um, was this surfer was surfing in ice, Iceland and he captured the Northern, Northern Lights at night and then they use artificial lights to to um to light up like the surfing area and the waves and stuff and I, I was really inspired by that and um yeah i just love sort of the storytelling uh visuals this guy um creates and i think it's so genuine it's for a good purpose and you know he sells prints and all that all the original old school ways of what photographers used to do rather than just social media so i look up to like people like him um, Chris Burkhard, famous photographer. Um, yeah. To close it out, if you were to, you know, anyone who not only wants to get into videography in the future, but also like entrepreneurship, just anything that they're passionate about, what would you tell them to do? And kind of like just words of wisdom. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I guess like at the end of the day, try and find like, you know, something that you really enjoy um, and if you enjoy it so much that you can't live without it and you want to make it your job, just um, be sure that that sort of passion and career path, when you sort of start doing that, you feel like you're still not working a day in life. You, it's it's all passion. Um, yeah, I guess just find the right sort of lane that and, and career path um, that, yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a hard one. Yeah, it it's is a hard, hard one. I sort of had it for a second and I, it, it, I sort of lost it at the end. It's but in your mind, but yeah, trying to find the words. Yeah, to yeah, exactly. Thing. It's yeah. tricky, but yeah, just, um, yeah, you know, life is pretty short. So um, just, yeah, find a hobby and or career path that you, you really enjoy and, you know, it feels like you're not working a day in life. That's my words. 100%. Yeah. All right, Alex, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, having me in the show. Um, yeah, it's been great to sort of chat and discuss. Yeah, safe travels back to Adelaide and hope to connect more in the future. Definitely. I'm sure we'll, um, yeah, collaborate on a creative project in the future and yeah, get that potential. going. Definitely. 100%. All right. Thank you again. Thanks so much. Cheers.